You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a successful motivational speaker and trusted life coach, Nancy knows how you can live the life you want regardless of the challenges you face. Although she's legally blind, Nancy's mission is to inspire others to overcome obstacles and live life full out. Call in at 800-333-0001 to ask Nancy for advice on topics such as relationships, finances, business, health, and more. Just call 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. I am Nancy Soleri and today we're going to be talking about passions. I love this topic because honestly, I want you to think about over the course of this time together, what are your passions? What fires you up? What is something that if you could do for a living, it would be like, pinch me now. I can't believe I'm even getting paid for it. What is something that brings a smile to your face? Something that you just wake up every morning just being excited to do. That's the zone that you want to be in. That's what it means to live full out. Now, I hear you. There are those curveballs of life and the unexpected and the heartbreak and the pain and all the things that can come at us to throw us off course. But remember that you are the one who has the ability to cast away those negative thoughts or when things come at you, those unexpected burdens, you have the ability to not let them overpower you. So today we want to focus on what is your passion? What do you want most in life? And we want to figure out how we can put together a plan of action to allow you to really bask in that passion and and excel in it and be able to share your successes with us and even your family and friends and, and just you know, feel proud of how far you've come. And so I want you to feel free to call in at 800-333-0001. I am here to talk and and figure out that plan. Also, we're going to be having a very inspiring guest on our next segment, Cheyenne Webb Kreisberg. She was a, the youngest freedom fighter, fighter on Bloody Sunday in 1965. At eight years old, she marched, she demonstrated, and she's going to share her story with us. It's so inspiring. I love it. And then most of all, we want to hear from you. If you have questions on today's topic, please reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. Again, connect at livingfullout.com. We want to make sure to get the resources that you will need to move forward and live full out. Now I'm getting a word from our producer that we do have a caller in the line. We're going to go ahead and say hello to them. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, Hi how welcome are you? to the show. I'm great. Hi. I'm great. What's going on? How can we help you? Um, I have a little problem. I have, um, I've been with my boyfriend for a couple of years and we started living together beginning of last year and he's in the military and was decided to go back to school. Well, after he's done his first two years, he has to transfer. So we're just kind of in a spot where it's hard because he's trying to leave and we're trying to to get our life started and we're just at a a stand. Is that frustrating? It is. It's, it's hard because I want it to work out and to progress, but at the same time, it's it's harder because he has to go to school. Mm-hmm. You know what? This is one of those times in life where you have to put a lot of trust and a lot of faith into your relationship. Right now, it's being tested by, you know, his going back to school, his needs, and at some point, the pendulum is going to swing and down the road, it's going to be your needs or something that comes up in your life that's going to pull your relationship another direction. And then out of nowhere, the cards are going to fall down again and it's going to be other people's needs influencing your life. So the thing is, is that you always want to remain a whole together. You know, two halves make a whole, right? And you want to try to keep that bond as strong as you can and weather the stormy times together. Now, that's not always easy to take a back seat. It's not always easy to be patient and and let someone else live their dream when you feel like you're just kind of hanging out. Is it, is that kind of how you feel? Yeah, kind of, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so what I want you to think about and really take this in Take this time to to plan. Take this time to assess, dream, 
kind of put together what you want. Because sometimes when, when, when life takes away the need for us to make a decision, you kind of get this special time right now where I'm not saying nothing's expected of you, but it's like you don't have to make a, a decision in your life yet. Take this time to plan. Do you get that? Like, what do you want? What do you want most one year from now? What does your life right. look like? And if your life takes you to like a new, a new location and everything just kind of gets shaken up and you have to think about, well, if that does happen, what would bring me joy? What would make me happy? Right. Now, right. here's the thing. If, if your needs and your desires outweigh the bond that you and him have, then respect that as well. Because this is right. your life, right? Right. right. And, and some Very true. don't forget, don't, don't be afraid to get a little selfish sometimes, but do it right. with integrity and honor. And I mean that because if you, if you, if you clear in your mind why you want something so bad and you tell somebody that need, that desire, that want, then, you know, you have a pretty good argument, right? But if you don't right. know, if you don't know what you want and you don't know what you're standing for, that's why you want to take this time to figure it out so you can communi communicate effectively what it is that you're trying to say and what you want. Does that make sense? That's, yeah, that is. That's, yeah. <laughs> you make it sound so much you, easier. No, no, I, I promise you. But, but you know what the good news is? <laughs> the, the good news is... There is this quote, one of my favorite quotes from Abraham Lincoln, and it says, the best thing about a day is that it happens one day at a time. Just try to enjoy today. Try to advance yourself forward in some way today. Relax in some way today. Laugh about something today. And then, then there will always be tomorrow, right? right. But I don't want right. you to waste your life um, overthinking tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That is very, that's very true. All right. Well, I believe in you. Thank you so much for calling in and let us know how things Thank go. You. Okay. Thank All you right. for your Thank perspective. You. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye -bye. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Such a great uh, call because honestly, I think we've all been there. I know I have. And, and it's just, that's life, right? We get to these crossroads and it's like, do I go right? Do I go left? Do I go straight? Or do I just sit and be? And sometimes, like in her case, I think she just needs to be. So it's really important that as we, as we go along in today's show, that we reflect on what do we want? Not what everybody else wants for us, not what we're forced to do, but what do we want? Now, I'm getting a word from our producer that we have another caller on the line. Hello, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi there. Hey, thank you for calling in. How can we help you today? Uh, um, I just have a uh, question. So I'm leaving to study abroad for six months and like in January, and I'm not sure if I made the right decision. Like I want to go, but uh, leaving my family and friends for a long time is like making me feel a bit nervous. Um, and it's like thinking about it now kind of scares me. Um, so I don't I don't know how if like if I made the right decision or if there's a way to get rid of this like fear that I'm feeling. Well. Keep in mind, the, the word fear actually stands for false evidence appearing real. Okay? It, it's mm -hmm. a pressure. It's a fear that's being placed upon you right now that isn't real. The, the fear is the, the what ifs. What if my family forgets about me? What if they get mad at me? What if I never meet people? What if I have a horrible experience? Your mind can run away with you about a bazillion what ifs. But let's mm -hmm. look but let's look at it the other way. What if great things happen? Right? What if you learn? What if you grow? You have to take a gamble in life and right now you're taking that gamble. But I have no doubt that the reason why you said yes to this experience is because you're passionate about it, you want it, and trust in that. If you trust in that, you can't go wrong. 
just got to trust yourself and tell those fears, get out of my mind. I'm doing this. Okay? Uh-huh. But I but but I, I know you'll do great things, and I want to thank you very much for calling into the show. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, when we come back, we're going to be joined by Cheyenne Webb Kreisberg. Very special interview. You don't want to miss it. Uh, we're talking about following our passions today. We all have them. Let's execute it. Let's go out there and go after them. This is the Living Full Out Show. I am Nancy Soleri, and we'll be coming right back after this break. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I'd like kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Tomorrow? <laughs> Let's check with Mom. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Just make sure you have everything. Yep. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? 233 North Maple, please. It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Also, find fun activities to do like boating and biking or camping and hiking. Plus, much more. It's all right in your naturehood. Best day ever. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Don't you wish that getting your child to eat right, move more, and spend less time in front of a screen could be as easy as pushing a button? It might not be that simple, but you do have more power than you know. And you can maximize that power with proven strategies, tips, and tools from the National Institutes of Health's We Can, or Ways to Enhance Children's Activity and Nutrition program. We Can offers all kinds of resources, including fun recipes and activities the family can do together to show you the way to live a healthier lifestyle. We're not saying it's easy. We are saying that it can be done. Take the first step today. Call 1-866-359-3226 for a free We Can Parents Handbook. And be sure to visit the We Can website at wecan.nhlbi.nih.gov for free information, too. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over until one day I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org signs. 
Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. A professional motivational speaker, Nancy can help you overcome obstacles and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Soleri, and today we're talking about passion and how in life we are tested, but sometimes our passion is what gets us through and what fires us up, gets us to the other side. And our inspirational guest today, Cheyenne Webb Kreisberg, is a perfect example of that. At the young age of eight years old, she stood up. She followed her passion. It was in 1965 that she marched for, for civil rights. She didn't know what it all meant, but she knew that she had a desire in her heart for people to be able to feel free. And I'd like for her to share her story with us today. So I want to welcome Cheyenne to the show. Hello, welcome. How are you? Thank you so very much. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I I was so excited about today's interview because you have just, you are such a great example of what it means to live full out. And you started that at such a young age. I mean, to be eight years old, I remember trick-or-treating with a cousin the other day uh, around Halloween time. And I looked at some of these eight-year-olds and I knew your interview was coming up. And I looked at them thinking, that was a little Cheyenne. I couldn't believe it. I mean, everyone eight years old is such a tender age for her to do what she did. So Cheyenne, will you take us back and let us understand who, who was this fireball? Who was this confident, courageous girl at eight years old? Well, you know, um, in looking back when I was growing up in George Washington Carver Mm -hmm. projects, from a poor family of eight, during the 60s, it was rough. Um, and, you know, growing up being very poor, um, the only thing that I knew prior to um, meeting Dr. Martin Luther King and so many others who had a profound impact on my life, it was that I would be that little girl who would be the the girl who would play uh, hopscotch, play jacks like any other normal kid, go to school. But I was always very inquisitive, though. And that was something that became very natural to me. I always asked questions. Uh, and I always wanted to be the person who was in front of the class to participate in uh, extracurriculum activities in spite of my being poor. Um it didn't really phase me to the extent where it would stop me from following uh, those things that I really loved doing as as a little girl. Well, you know, it's interesting because there was a movement brewing in your neighborhood, in your surroundings, you know, back when you were eight, back in 1965. And what was changing? What drew your attention even at that young age? What drew my attention during that time, uh, number one, many places that my parents would take me as a little girl, I would always see the for color signs only, the for white signs. I saw that in many places uh, that uh, we would go to, and and whether it was at a doctor's office, uh whether it was even at stores. And I used to ask questions about that. And I always recognized the fact that the for white side was always better than the for color only. And and something was pricking my conscience about that. And And before I knew it, it didn't take me long to really understand that. Being um, coming into being with the civil rights movement that came to Selma, Alabama. Mm-hmm. You know, there there was that day, the very first day that you met Martin Luther King, a pivotal one for you, really. 
um, share with me about how he came up to you and what he said to you. I'll never forget that day when my best friend Rach and I were playing in front of the now historic Browns Chapel AME Church. And on this particular day, we saw these beautiful cars that had driven up in front of the church, and there were uh, people getting out of the cars, and we found our way walking to the first two to three cars. And there were these men who had gotten out of uh, those first two cars, and and we went and stood in front of the uh, crowd where they were surrounding this particular man, and we saw this one man who was actually putting a suit coat jacket on uh, or assisting him with putting this suit coat jacket on. He had this nice white starchy shirt on, this black tie and black slacks, well-groomed. And the man who was assisting him with the jacket, he looked at us. He said, do you little girls know who this man is? And, of course, we didn't know who any of them were. He said to us, this is Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And the way in which they surrounded him and the way in which they were actually treating him, we knew that he had to be someone special. And Dr. King immediately turned his attention to us, and he started asking us the normal questions that adults would ask children. He asked us our names, where did we live, how old we were, where did we go to school, and they were getting ready to have a meeting on this particular day at Brown's Chapel Church. And he continued to just talk to us. And while they were getting ready to go to the rear door of Brown's Chapel Church to begin this meeting, that same man who put that suit coat jacket on Dr. King, he turned to us as they were beginning to go in that back door. He said, you little girls can go on and play now because we're about to have a meeting. And Dr. King immediately said to him, he said no, and he took us by our hands and took us on into that back door before that meeting would start. And this was the first time that I set my eyes on someone that I knew instantly had become very special to me. You know, that that is such a moment, and um, and I'm so glad that you, you touched on that, because really, Cheyenne, we have that ability to be that special person. We can't all be, obviously, him, but we all have that ability to make that, that impact in someone's life, and he did that for you. Now, we're going to be taking a short break here in a second, Cheyenne. When we come back, I want to talk about... You know, what happened that day, you know, March 7th, 1965, better known as Bloody Sunday, and how actively involved you were in that march, okay? So we'll be coming back uh, to your interview shortly. And for everybody listening, it's really important that as you hear Cheyenne's story, it's about figuring out in your life, what are you most passionate about? You know, who could you make an impact in their life today? And then how together could you take each other's passions and make a real difference? And Cheyenne's story, again, is a great example of how to make a difference by living out your passion. So we're going to be coming right back. This is the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Soleri. Stay tuned. Listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. There are many sounds in your day to day life. There are sounds that wake you up, sounds that make you smile, sounds that energize you, and sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. 
For more information, visit ready.gov slash alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the Internet's most beloved pets. With millions of YouTube views, shares, Instagram likes, followers, and fans across the globe. But what do all these amazing pets have in common? Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a shelter or adoptable pets near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard? Well, <laughs> that's entirely up to you. Visit the shelterpetproject.org and hear more about Hamilton the Pug, Toast, and Keyboard Cat's amazing adoption stories. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Your perfect pet is just a click away at the shelterpetproject.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a trusted life coach, Nancy will help you overcome setbacks and embrace all life has to offer. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about following our passions. And really, that is is so well demonstrated by our guest today, Cheyenne Webb Kreisberg, who at eight years old in 1965, courageously stood up and and fought for civil rights and and wanted to, even at the tender age, make her mark. And I want to have her share with us today about that day that became known as Bloody Sunday. So Cheyenne, welcome back to the show. Thank you so very much. Now, I want to... Let our well, I was going to say real quick. Uh, I just want to let our guests know that you know, while Cheyenne had a lot of courage, she also was discouraged by many people to get involved in what was going on. But her fiery spirit kept her going. And and you know, Cheyenne, I'd really like for you to kind of share with us about the day of the march and what your involvement was. Nancy, what led to the most traumatic experience of my life? was my participation as the youngest little girl on the Edmund Pettus Bridge on March 7, 1965, which is now called the Bloody Sunday March. I'll never forget the many threats that had been made about the possibilities 
And what would happen to people who would participate on that march? My parents had warned me over and over again about not being a part of that march. But even in spite of that, I had made up in my mind that I just wasn't going to let nobody turn me around. And even my best friend, Rachel, who was afraid to participate on that march that day. I'll never forget going out to Brown's Chapel Church on that particular day. And and normally when I would go to Brown's Chapel Church during that time, I would always go to the front pew uh, and join in the singing of the Freedom Songs. But on this particular day, I sat on the last row uh, of that church on that day. And as I sat there, I listened to the many uh, speeches that were being made, the special instructions that were being given to all of the courageous people who were going to march on that particular day. And and everybody, uh, after praying and, and singing the freedom songs, everybody was asked to go out front to line up for the march. And as people were coming out of the church, they were trying to discourage me tell me that I couldn't or I shouldn't march on this particular day. However, even in spite of that, I'll never forget going midway of the uh, lineup of the march. I saw this particular uh, lady who was a teacher during that time, the late Mrs. Margaret Moore. And I went to Mrs. Moore and I indicated to her that I wanted to, to march and she even tried to discourage me, but she saw that strong sense of determination that I had as that little girl. And she just grabbed me by the hand because I started crying. And she said, well, just come on, child. And then that march will begin, and we were making our way um, to the Edmunds Pettus Bridge on this particular day, and I'll never forget uh, going, uh, walking downtown Selma, Alabama. I saw whites on the sidelines. Uh, everybody was instructed to be quiet, to keep their heads forward, and, of course, to be nonviolent, regardless of what would happen. And when we were walking downtown Selma, making our way closer to the Edmunds Pettus Bridge, I'll never forget. I saw many whites on the sidelines, and they were saying bad things and saying um the N-word, uh, trying to distract us as marchers. And some of them were even throwing things uh, at at the marchers. And being a little girl, I was looking around because I was becoming very, very concerned as we got closer to the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And I'll never forget, uh, once we had approached the Edmund Pettus Bridge on this particular day, and as I looked down, uh, to the bottom of the bridge, I saw hundreds of policemen with billy clubs. I saw the dogs, the horses, the tear gas masks, and surely my heart had begun to rumble and just beat really fast because seeing that particular picture, I just knew that something was going to happen. Well, we and that, all- you know, my 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 palms are getting sweaty even you hearing you tell the story because I, I I can picture that and you know that eight year old girl she finally did get scared and you ran you ran as fast as you could but there was a moment when someone picked you up and oh, and you, you so desperately wanted to keep running share with us that moment I'll never forget. Um after racism had unleashed its brutality upon all of the marchers who were there, I started running like so many others. Tear gas had begun to burst in the air, and people were continuously being beaten down with billy clubs and dogs and horses were pushing their way into the crowd and trampling over people. And as I was running, I'll never forget uh, the late Hosea Williams picking me up And as he picked me up, my little feet were still galloping in his arms. And and I was crying, and tear gas had gotten into my eyes. I could barely see. But I turned to him as he picked me up, and I shouted to Hosea. I said to him in my own childish voice, put me down because you are not running fast enough. 
and he didn't stop running with me basically until we had practically made our way back to George Washington Carver Homes on that particular day. Well, I mean, Cheyenne, the fact that you did not get injured is is a miracle, really. And when you did finally get home, your parents were waiting right at the door, and you ran up the stairs, and you were just consumed with tears. But what did that little eight-year-old girl do then? What was her outlook going forward? You know, even in spite of what I had experienced um, on that bridge and and, uh, what was actually going through my mind uh, after getting home and seeing my parents running up to my bedroom and my parents coming behind to comfort me, I was still determined more than ever to be a part of that movement. And I went to my drawer as I was crying and my parents were trying to talk to me. And I I got a paper and pencil and I started writing my funeral arrangements. And my parents were there watching me as I did that. And I was telling them that I wanted to go back out to Brown's Chapel Church and join the other marches there. And for some reason, they wouldn't uh, let me go. But that was the day in which I really, truly understood what the movement was all about. And there was a song that we used, a freedom song that we used to sing, which was Old Freedom. Oh, freedom over me, over me, and before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. That song resonated in my heart yeah. and in my soul, and that yeah, and I, can, I, I can... really understood what, what it really meant. Mm-hmm. I can I can hear that passion even today when you say those words. I can I can see and hear how how much they mean to you. Um, as we round out this interview, Cheyenne, I'm just I'm just curious. Our our audience that is listening today, we're talking about passion, tapping into one's passion, following your passion, discovering what is your passion, and what would you say to our audience listening today when it comes to passion? and figuring out what it is that they're fighting for, what it is that they desire? Well, first and foremost, I would I would really inspire anyone to, uh, if there's anyone in their lives who can motivate them and inspire them enough to help them find their passion if they don't already know it, but to help them in a very unique way to stay close to their passion Uh, because passion really delivers purpose. When you follow your passion and you're doing something in particular, not just to make a difference in your life, but also to make a difference in the lives of others, that is so meaningful to life and to you. And you never know where it will take you. And the reason why I can share these words to people, and I do it all the time, is because I never knew from the first day that I made a decision to become a part of that movement, that that my life was changing without me really even knowing it. And it was delivering a passion for me, not only Mm -hmm. to make a difference in my life, but to make a difference in the lives of others. And that is what my life has been about from that time yeah. even to now. And there's no better way. Yeah. There's nothing I get that. money can buy when you have a passion. To do that for <laughs> well yourself, said. You know? Well said. You know, uh, thank you so much, Cheyenne, for being on our show today. I, you are so special. And uh, we really appreciate you sharing your story with us. Thank you so very much for having me. Absolutely. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Cheyenne. Thank you.
And for everybody listening, she said it best, you know, it's about following that passion. And sometimes life is going to deliver it and it's going to be early in our life, just like with Cheyenne, her passion came early. And other times it's, it's our discovery of life to figure out what is our passion, what gets us excited. So wherever you are on the spectrum, just know that it's all going to be okay. But you have to trust yourself. You really do. And you have to be eyes wide open, ears open, looking for those opportunities to tune into a passion that you can find purposeful in your life. So we're going to be coming back, taking more of your calls shortly. Uh, this is the Living Full Out Show, and I'm Nancy Soleri. And again, it's all about passions, thinking about what it is that you want most in your life, what it gets you excited. This is the time. I want you all to come back with that renewed energy of going after life in a big way, living your life full out on your terms. We'll be right back after this break. Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, what? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. The following message is about Medicaid and CHIP, free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. Enrollment is open year-round. Hey, voice lady, give me the mic. Um, okay. Hey, DJ, let's switch up the music. That's better. So listen up, moms and dads out there. There are these programs called Medicaid and CHIP. They offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids. Things like doctor and dentist visits, prescriptions, and shots are covered. All the stuff that keeps kids like me healthy and in charge. So, as you can tell, a covered kid is a confident kid. And it means confident parents, too. To learn more about affordable health coverage for your family, visit healthcare.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. That's 1-877-543-7669. Yep, you could do something big for your family today because enrollment is open year-round. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And Sophia. They're going to jump out of trees. You can't stop them. They'll go down the slide head first. They'll make parachutes out of sheets. They'll balance on things that are impossible to balance on, like the back of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. They'll run into walls. They'll climb things that won't hold their weight. They'll put their fingers in places where they could get smashed. They'll drive their tricycles down steep hills. They'll bounce balls off their faces. They'll step on each other. They'll jump on each other. They'll invent whole new ways to put themselves in jeopardy. But one of the most dangerous things kids will do happens while they're sitting perfectly still. Kids who ride in a car without a booster seat are much more likely to suffer serious or fatal injury during a crash than kids in boosters. But amazingly, 80% of all kids who need them aren't in them. After a toddler seat and until they're four foot nine, boost your kids and don't let them down. Go to BoosterSeat.gov to learn more about the importance of boosters. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hey, Nick Cannon here. So we all know we've got a lot of talent in America. But unfortunately, there's something else we've got way too much of. Childhood hunger. 17 million kids struggle with it in this country. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks gather surplus food to give hope to hungry kids and their families. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. We are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. Enroll, we say, we want you to be okay. Enroll, we say, take care, people, for goodness 
sake. Health insurance is now affordable. It covers prescriptions, hospitalizations, and preventive care. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn more. And take care, people. Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. To discover your passions is a large aspect of what it means to live full out. And you'll know when you're passionate about something because that fire in your belly will be there. You'll think about it all the time. You'll be excited to wake up in the morning for that passion. But most of all, when you do discover it, when you know what it is, hold it near and dear to your heart and do whatever you can to make it come true. That's when you're living your life full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a certified life coach, Nancy can help you to overcome challenges and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the show. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out show. And today we're talking about passions. And You know, it's interesting how passions flow into our life. Sometimes a friend, a mentor can help us to discover that passion. Sometimes we fall into it at really young ages, such as our guest Cheyenne, who just shared with us her story. Or even for me, being 10 years old, I fell into my passion of wanting to be a counselor. Um, And a lot of that came to watching my parents go through a hard divorce and the troubles and challenges my family faced. I was the counselor in my family. And it's never too late to let your passions unfold and to discover them. And you can have more than one. That's the most exciting part. So I'm going to go to the phone lines now because I'm getting a word from our producer that we have a call on the line. Um, Hello. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi. Thank you for calling in. How can we help you today? Well, last year I got into some trouble with my dad, and um, he has kind of, like, cut back on trust with me, and I have been really trying to focus, like, on school and stuff, and I really want to go out of state for college, but he doesn't think that, like, I'm A, going to be able to get in, and B, he doesn't think I'll be able to, um, you know, stay healthy while I'm there, and I just don't really know how to deal with it. Well, you got a couple choices. Now, choices is exciting, right? You got a couple choices. (laughs) So if you're going to be needing the support financially and even maybe emotional support of your parents, you know, they do get a vote. And sometimes we do have to earn back trust and we have to do what it takes, however long it takes to prove that we're worthy of people's trust, financial assistance, and and sometimes even just emotional support. Now, if you... Are, 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 are willing to take a gamble on yourself and you feel as though you could make it on your own. There's also plenty of people who strive out there on their own and they get a job and they financially pay for their own school and they pay for their room and board. And, you know, it's definitely a little bit more of a bumpier road, but there's a lot of people in life who have, have that determination within themselves to, to want to, go after their dreams and passions despite what others say. So I don't know which 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 group do you fall into? I really want to be able to be independent, but I also I don't I'm not really sure. I feel like I don't want to be as dependent on my dad as like I feel my sisters kind of have been. But um I also don't want to just jump off the boat right away, you know? Well you know what? Trust that. Trust that. Because okay. although you're very much a woman who is making her way and trying to define her dreams and goals, you're always going to be your daddy's little girl. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of a special time where you're trying to step out there, but yet you still want to be loved and nurtured. And there's going to be plenty of time. Fast forward five years from now, 20 years from now, when everything is on your shoulders only and your parents aren't aren't paying your way or aren't there as much in helping you make decisions. This is kind of Mm -hmm. special time. And so what you might want to do is just let life unfold, you know, take it day by day. And, and most of all, having the respect of people 
in our lives or even living in integrity ourselves, that means more than any major you could get, any job you could score, mm -hmm. any relationship you could have. What, how people think of you and how they talk about you, that's what we build our whole lives for. Do you get that? Yeah, I get it. So I, I would honestly take this time to, to talk to your dad in the most mature way you can, hear him out, and maybe make a plan. You know, dad, let's do it your way for a year. And then in a year, can we, can we reassess? And, and let there be kind of a little bit of negotiating every year. How's that sound? That sounds actually really nice. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And, and most of all, just enjoy this time with your family. Like I said, it's sacred, special time. Don't rush it just so you can get out there and be on your own. Sometimes be on your own is fun, and sometimes you just wish you could be back in your family's arms. Okay? Mm -hmm. right, right. Thank you so much for calling in. Yep, thank you. All right. Nice you too. And, you know, most of all, when we think about following our passions in life, sometimes we want it now, that instant gratification. But I, I want everybody to really take in that a true passion is, is developed over time. You know, there's that old saying, the best things in life are worth waiting for. It's really true. Just take little nibbles of what your dream and what your goals and what your passions are. And each each day, each week, each year, advance yourself forward. Don't rush it. Per perfect it. You know, some of the best uh, examples of this are, are artists, people who paint something over time or develop their, you know, music or their acting craft over entire lifetime. We don't have to rush it. We just have to enjoy the every step of the way, those moments. Most of all, I want you to know I so enjoy being here with you every week and we want to bring the, the most special content we can to you. So please reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com because if there's a show theme that you'd like us to present or a type of guest, we'd love to bring them your way. Or if you think that you have a story that would inspire our audience, we want to hear from you. Again, that's connect at livingfullout.com. Join us on all of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, you name it. And most of all, thank you to the Living Full Out team. We have Rich and Roger and Riley and Sam and gosh, Amber and, you know, Kenny and like list goes on. But most of all, thank you to you. Here's all of you living your lives full out. See you next week.